What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about how to ad-lib on Fly Me to the Moon. A couple of videos ago I used Fly Me to the Moon as my intro song and I got a whole bunch of comments asking me if I could do a tutorial on how to ad-lib on Fly Me to the Moon. So today I am going to take the first eight bars of Fly Me to the Moon and show you how to personalize it, ad-lib on it, make it your own. Just by adding four simple rules to it, we're going to take this thing from bland and boring to making it sound super cool. If you've ever seen a lead sheet for a jazz standard, you'll recognize right away that that is not the way anyone would ever play it. It's basically a bare bones way of showing you the melody and you are expected to ad lib on it. Ad lib meaning at liberty, add stuff to it and make it your own. So today I'm gonna to show you four simple steps that we can use on any song, but we're gonna do it on Fly Me To The Moon to take it from bland and boring to hip and cool. So this is what the lead sheet version of Fly Me To The Moon sounds like. So those are all the right notes and I guess the right rhythms, but no one would ever play it that way or sing it that way. So today we're gonna to talk about how to ad lib on it, meaning what to add to it to make it sound a lot better. Before we start the improvement process, if you enjoy my content, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you like these how to ad lib tutorials, give me a suggestion of other songs that I should do the ad lib tutorials on. After learning the melody from the lead sheet, the next thing you want to do is find the goal notes. The goal notes are the most important notes. So if you're listening to lyrics, you can always find them because they're like subjects and verbs and things that are important. If the goal notes are never the, and, so, uh, any of that kind of stuff. They're always like the really big words. So with this song, we are going to apply the goal notes and you're going to hear right away, even without adding anything to it, just by bringing out the goal notes, it's going to make it sound a lot better. So this is what it sounds like with the goal notes. I have highlighted them in yellow so you can see which notes I am bringing out as my goal notes. So just by bringing out those goal notes, you can already hear a lot more direction in the melody. So let's talk about the goal notes for a second. Usually the goal notes are gonna be the top or bottom notes like that you turn around on. This song, it's the note after the turnaround. So the first one, we start on that A, we go to the D. You're just going down the scale. Then you go up the scale. So that would be the turnaround note. The turnaround note meaning like you're going up and then down. So you would normally think the A might be the goal note, but the G sharp is the beginning of that next phrase. So how do we know? This whole song is about walking down the scale. The whole motif behind this song is bringing out the ascending scale line. Starting on an A, then a G sharp, then an F sharp, then an E sharp. So now that we know that, we know what the important notes are, the next thing we're gonna do is just follow the regular rules of ad living. So the first rule is add articulations and dynamics. So we are gonna play some dots, some staccatos, some accents, some dops, marcados, and we're gonna put some uh, dynamics in there. So when the notes go down, we're gonna get softer. When the notes go up, we're gonna get louder. If we have a, lo a long note, we're gonna do something to it. So listen to what happens when I just add dynamics and articulation. That changes it a lot, a lot, a lot, just by adding dynamics and articulation. We haven't added a note, changed a rhythm, we haven't done anything except changed how we play the note, how we attack the note. So dynamics and articulation are really important when it comes to ad-libbing on a song. Take a listen, I'll do it another way. I'll just kind of pick some random notes and dot them, some I'll marcato them, dot them, some I'll accent. So how do you know what accents to use? 
in the beginning, you just kind of guess. You just add a dot here. If it doesn't sound good, add a dot someplace else. Add a dop here. Add an accent here. And the more you do it, the more things will start to sound really natural to you. It's just like a learning process like anything else. There's no specific rule of this note gets dotted and this note gets dopped. Now there are a couple like standard rules as far as dynamics go, but when you're playing this thing, especially ad-libbing, just play around with it and see what works and what sounds good to you. The next thing we're gonna do is change the rhythm. So we're gonna make some notes shorter and some notes longer. If you make something short, you have to make something else long because we need four beats in every measure and vice versa. If you need, if you make something long, you have to make something short. Again, we ha everything has to equal four beats in a measure. So take a listen. I'm just going to change the rhythm up a little bit. I didn't change any notes. I didn't add any notes. All I did was change the rhythm. That's it. That is where you're going to get a lot of movement. And that's how you're going to really personalize these melodies is by coming up with your own rhythm based off of the original rhythm. Like we don't want to change it so that you can't recognize the song. We want to change it so it's our own version of it. Take a listen. I'll do a different way. Again, the way to change the rhythm is just play around with it a little bit. Make one note longer, then you'll have to make another note shorter. Keep messing with it until it sounds good and it feels good when you play it. The next step is repeat a note. So any of these notes you can repeat and it's gonna sound pretty good, especially in a melody like this, any of the quarter notes or the long notes. Uh, the more you play it, the more some are gonna pop out for you and those are gonna be the ones that you wanna repeat, but just play around with it and see what sticks. So here is a version of me repeating some notes. That adds a lot of motion because it's giving you more notes. So it's pushing the music forward. So repeating notes can be really powerful, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to make it sound like that because that almost sounds like Morse code. So repeat some notes, but be careful about how many you do and how many you repeat next to each other. So repeating some notes can give you a lot of motion. The last step is adding notes. So adding notes that aren't already written in the melody. Up to now, we've just been changing things and repeating things. Now we're gonna add something. So here is an example of what I play and then I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. So I ripped into the first note. So instead of just starting on an A, I start on an E and play a chromatic run into the A. So I am adding those notes, the E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, into the A. Listen to what I do here. There I am adding a C sharp in between every note. A C sharp is a chord tone, so I'm just playing the G sharp, then a C sharp, F sharp, then a C sharp, E, then a C sharp. So I'm just adding in that chord tone to give me some motion. Now on this last note, listen to what I'm going to play. I jump up to an E. An E is another chord tone, so from the C sharp to the E, back to the C sharp, that's a chord tone. Or I could do a neighbor tone. The neighbor tone is the note right next to it, so I'm going to go C sharp, D, C sharp this time. Or the neighbor tone below would be a B, so that last note I'll play C sharp, B, C sharp. So when it comes to adding notes and you're not quite sure which notes to add, chord tones are always a good choice and so are neighbor tones. Just by adding those four rules, listen to what happens to this simple melody.
You can completely transform a melody from bland and boring into something that's really hip and cool just by following those four rules for ad-libbing. I'm gonna show you an ad-lib version of Fly Me to the Moon right now. So the black notes are the notes that are written in the lead sheet melody. The blue notes, the handwritten notes, are what I added to change the melody into an ad-lib version. So I'm gonna play through it and I'm gonna show you everything that I did and tell you exactly why I did it. So the first note is a quarter note and I repeated it. So the first thing was repeat a note. Now on that D, I'm accenting it because it's a long note off the beat. A long note off the beat is anything longer than a quarter note. And if you look at that note, I also added a dot to it to lengthen it even more. And when I did that, the note after it, I had to turn into an eighth note because I need four beats in a measure. Now this is the written out version of what I told you in that earlier ad lib part. I put a C sharp in between each of these notes. Now when I put that C sharp there, I also wanna kinda of ghost those notes. I don't want the C sharps to be really strong. I'm using them to give me some motion, not to be super important notes. So if I don't ghost them, this is what it sounds like. Doesn't sound good at all. If I do ghost them, you just hear that bounce, and that's what I'm going for. Now on the long note, again, I'm hitting it. I didn't write this in, but I'm hitting it hard, bringing it down, and bringing it back up. Here's the first line. Next line, the F sharp, I've got a scoop. That little line going in, scoop. And then instead of playing the E on the beat, I rest for a half a beat and I put it on the and. And then that last note, the B, I turn that into a quarter note by tying it over the bar line. And what happens there is then it puts every note after that on the and. So instead of having notes that are landing on the beat, it puts them all on the and, which just gives me a different rhythm and makes the music move forward. You hear that? Instead of. It just makes it a lot more interesting. Now on the E sharp, I anticipated it because I wanted it to be part of the ands, part of the offbeat notes. And then I lengthened it by adding a dot to it. So I had to make the next note after it an eighth note, so I had four beats in a measure, and it also kind of sets me back up the land and time on that C sharp. So take a listen again. And then on my last note, dynamics and articulation. Forte piano, I hit it hard, bring it down and bring it up. So listen to the whole thing with all of the ad-libs I have written in. And that is how you completely transform a melody just by using the four rules of ad-libbing. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you have other suggestions of songs that I should do ad-lib tutorials on, leave me a comment below. Thanks a lot.